Okay, so uh, pillar one, so I divided this into three pillars. So pillar one is um, where we talk about the global data center infrastructure management or orchestration, right? And so what is, what is that? And what is the problem that we are solving here? So the challenges that, uh, that customers have in a, in a data center um, uh, situation, and you know, Arnaldo, uh, please uh, add uh, your commentary since you've lived this firsthand, developing this with the customers, but uh, there is a, obviously the management of all of these devices, the recovery and deployment of uh, a, a heterogeneous set of devices in a global distributed infrastructure, and then keeping track of uh, the, what are these, the devices' health, right? So many times the uh, logs that come out of these devices uh, are not in syslog or not uh, available uh, anywhere else other than sitting on the console port of these devices, but also to be able to manipulate uh, a, a server to rebuild it from scratch. These are the things I will be demoing to you at the end uh, at the end of uh, my presentation. And then, how do you recover from uh, you know outages and uh, and errors? Uh, I put a few examples there that I saw firsthand, um, such as you know imagine a, a switch that's in a, a very large data center remotely. It's locked up, right? And needs to uh, be power cycled. So if a switch is locked up, you can't even get to it from its uh, in-band management. What do you do, right? Uh, a server, uh, you know, you, you were upgrading it, and now it's stuck in this BIOS and needs to be rebuilt from scratch, right? What do you do then? Um, and in, in for software people, they just get a new server. But uh, what if you don't have other servers? So. This is the world of not public cloud, right? It's uh, most people um, still run all of their infrastructure on their own um, data centers. It's just more efficient, more secure, and more in control. So for those types of customers that still want to be in control of their infrastructure, how do you, uh, how do you gain control of that infrastructure? Uh, another one that, um, that was a problem is, uh, you know, there's a Palo Alto firewall that's re um, securing a bunch of workloads, right? Uh, but to stand up a new one, you need to license it and and rebuild it and re-image it. How does that get done, right? And these are kind of those little steps in the seat of life, as we call it, that uh, many cases get skipped from a you know from a uh, manufacturer point of view that uh, hampers the uh, automation of networks. And uh, Kurosh, just to add to, to your comments, I recall two different use cases, uh, two different problems that we, we helped it, uh, to solve. One was a very interesting one from one of the, the giants. Um, they wanted to detect the presence of a switch in the network through the LLDP. So then their automation tool could then start the process of uh, configuring using our platform through the serial consoles to touch the box and uh, do the configuration. It was, it was quite interesting uh, to solve that problem with them. Uh, the other, the other uh, use case that I recall, I think it was really flexibility in terms of automation. Right? Um, uh, there is Puppet, there is Chef, there is Ansible, there is REST API, but every customer, every company may have built their own stack of uh, automation tools and uh, uh, these customers were asking us right, um, on how to solve these problems. We had samples, uh, templates uh, for those type of, uh, of automation, but most importantly, we had to support all of them. I'd right? give them choice. We could not just lock them in in one type of uh, a solution. Yeah, so uh, just to then tell, tell the story of what exactly happens from a, from a customer point of view, uh, they have... Um, you know, server switches, routers, we already um, mentioned those pieces. So there's a lot more than, uh, than just compute that really take, it goes into operating um, an infrastructure. Uh, even things like uh, uh, the, you know, the airflow, the air conditioning just went out to, uh, there is uh, there is a water leak or somebody came in and opened uh, the cabinet and unplugged a few cables, right? Um, you wanna know that there, there has been a tamper of that infrastructure, so when you're doing troubleshooting, you you know you don't wonder uh, was there a physical tampering that actually caused the downtime, or is it a software glitch? So that whole series of data, as if you were present, virtually present at a remote data center, is really what customers are asking for. So in the case of the uh, NodeGrid Serial Console, 
uh, it's a it's essentially for that virtual presence of an IT administration to uh, get information about all the different components that are sitting out there uh, in a in a large data center in a colo in a micro data center, and from a serial console perspective, from sensors, from networks, and uh, be able to uh, remotely manage uh, this infrastructure uh, with the code that can run on top of this. Um, this server with the multiple different interfaces that it has. So uh, I, I hope that this is uh, clear. Got a quick question for you <clears throat> on form factor that's available. Are you guys part of, um, are, are you guys doing anything specific around OCP, Open19? Are you guys viewing the ecosystem for what's being built at sort of data center scale? Are you guys solving that form factor related problem? You guys still side mount? What are you, it's just, you know, standard 19 inch rack mount unit? What's... Oh yeah, I, I have that. Let me. Uh, I'll have that. Uh, it's it's going to come up, and then if I didn't answer your question, please ask me again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the first part that I'm showing here is uh, is about all the different sensors that can be connected to our devices, from GPIO sensors to um, detect uh, the various inputs that people want to uh, relays to control different elements that uh, are either in the cabinet or in a room temperature, humidity, turning on USB, uh, USB based beacons to turn on alarms for somebody that may be on site that needs to go do something, uh, it, smoke sensor. So all of these different inputs that uh, remotely can be gathered, collected, and uh, you'll see we have a data lake that uh, we collect this in, and there are more sensors coming soon. So customer says, I want this, I want that. So the cool part is we have extensible platform that as long as it exists uh, and uh, it's supported by Linux operating system, we can add it on and give that uh, flexibility of, uh, of of sensing and, and acting on um, on what the software wants to do. And this is a slide I was um, hoping to pull up as far as form pack factor and see if that answers your question. So we have the uh, the small sixteen uh, serial port uh, device. Uh, so if you go down the the pictures, so we have a sixteen thirty two forty eight, and then the bottom one is not two boxes; it's one box, and you see the front and the back. So uh, and I always wonder why they don't make switches like this. But it's uh, forty eight ports in the front, forty eight ports in the back, and these are serial ports, so that it's a very high density connectivity for switches, routers, PDUs um, in. Uh, in a very large uh, uh, rack. Does this answer your question? No, I was sort of curious. It looks like a standard 19 inch sort of across yes, the board. Yeah. You guys are not doing anything specific for open 19 or for or for OCP. Yeah, or so, so it, yeah, this is standard 19 inch, but we also have DCs and ACs. So we we have deployed right, in, in racks with 48 volts. Uh, so there, there are other types of uh, deployments uh, specifically, the, the form factor is for a 19-inch uh, rack. Uh, so it might be just a few highlights on the hardware. So one of the main um, characteristics is that it's an Intel x86. It runs the latest 64-bit uh, uh, Linux OS that's uh, secure, patched, and that's one of the requirements that uh, uh, customers have uh, because this is part of that uh, Net DevOps infrastructure. And uh, But it has all the... Uh, capabilities from a compute standpoint and memory standpoint to have large uh, buffers to have to enable uh, accessibility from uh, outside if the entire infrastructure dies it still can come in with LTE and rebuild things and that's that's very valuable right that you can you know if uh, as part of doing DevOps or net DevOps if uh, things get messed up you can say okay let me just revert to the beginning and rebuild my entire stack and have all of the means to actually accomplish that as if you were virtually or as if you were physically present there. So, so there's a combination of hardware that's needed there and then a set of software capabilities that's uh, needed to accomplish that. So, so quickly here, um, just, just to com complement, right, uh, we are addressing the initial provisioning, right? then the, the maintenance configuration uh, and eventually right, uh, logins, auditing uh, required in these large organizations, especially banks and pharmaceuticals, they, where, where they, they need to comply with um, the regla regulation. 
we talked about the hardware and the, and the OS that runs on, on that hardware. There is a you know, node grid manager, which manages the various uh, pieces of hardware uh, with respect to the configuration and um, uh, networking and basically seeing that in entire infrastructure from a single um, user interface. Arnold, anything you wanted to add on this one? Yeah, so, so um, the OS is the same across all platforms, right? And what Node Grid Manager brings is that uh, clustering capability, that centralized view right, across your cluster. And, um, and that's the single pane of uh, glass right, where you can really interact with the devices, push configuration, and, and manage the device, especially in the data center. As talking about the you know the architecture, right? Uh, so we talked about the hardware piece, and I'll show you a few pieces of the hardware uh, as well with respect to having different types of um, capabilities for edge compute, for storage, uh, for uh, different types of LTE options. So very, um, uh, very uh, modular uh, piece of hardware that uh, again uh, we can say yes to uh, any of the needs that our customers have. And then on top of that, the operating system that comes with the, the, the box, it allows uh, the routing, the firewalling, the IPsec tunnel uh, creation to uh, uh, a SASE vendor as an example, so that any which way you want to uh, configure uh, this box and operate it, that's uh, already part of the system. And then on top, uh, being a, a target for the various uh, types of orchestration uh, tools that you see, as well as running your own virtual uh, OSs. At the end of the day, it's a Linux-based uh, 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 OS and, and server. So this entire stack, it gives the flexibility of the hardware uh, needs, as well as the uh, flexibility of the software that um, uh, developers need to run infrastructure as code. Excuse me, I have a question. Please. Uh, so I'm still trying to understand the focus of the product. Is, is it uh, is it a orchestration tool? Is it a universal CPE? Because what you're showing is actually a universal CPE. Uh, then you said it said also a configuration tool. Uh, then you showed that it has the sensors. It, it collects the alarms. I'm I'm still trying to understand what's the focus of this product. So, a great question. So, uh, if you look at it from bits and pieces, right, um, then it may look like, a, to your point, a universal CPE, because universal CPEs can do this kind of a work, uh, but they don't necessarily have the modularity, the sensors, and the OS that is needed to be an out-of-box solution. Right. So, and that's why I'm tell, uh, I've turned this whole story into the customer's point of view. That from a customer point of view, they want to run network as code. Right. They don't want to. They don't want a universal CPE. So for them, they just want an out of box solution that goes into a data center and it can put its uh, its uh, uh, hooks into all of the different pieces of infrastructure and orchestrate everything out of the box. So you don't need to do any, it's not a white box where you have to build stuff. It's actually a, a, a out of box, it works as uh, for um, infrastructure management and, uh, and running network as code. And so all of the hardware pieces, logistics, uh, zero touch provisioning that you need to deal with if you were, uh, uh, if you were running this with doing this on your own or trying to piece it together, is all eliminated, and that's and I actually I, I like your question, so so thank you so much for that because that's the confusion that we want to address is it, it's not a bag of bits, it's actually a complete end-to-end -end solution that's ready to go out of the box. Does and, it help? And, and that's the transformation that we were talking about, right? So it's very straightforward in the data center. I tell data center is out of band management, right? The touching the serial consoles, allowing automation to run. Uh, allowing the deployment to, to be simpler and and um, and quick and consistent. Now, when you you start moving to uh, to the branch, right, and now you start seeing a transformation happening, which it's a mix of the out of band that you still need for remote presence, but also in terms of infrastructure is the networking connectivity because now you are also the networking the switch either for that location when you need to touch UPSs, PDUs. Uh, any any infrastructure device, right? 
and, and then now you're collecting the sensors because that device, that mini rack in the back of a, of a, of a store or a retail store, um, it's it's it, that there's no nobody there taking care of it, right? So now if the network goes down, you want you want the 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 ability to fail over through a cellular connectivity, but now you may be running an SDN and uh, in in a, in a firewall, and you want all these uh, uh, solutions to also benefit from the infrastructure that you build in from, and for that failover that is happening. So that's that's the transformation we are talking about that we are noticing, right? Straightforward in the data center, but becomes right, uh, quite uh, um, a mix of pieces right, uh, when, when you start moving this to the branch, to the edge, to the remote location. Okay, I have a follow-up uh, question. Uh, when we talk about the the orchestration systems, you know, we see uh, normally today they are cloud delivered. So your, in your case, it's uh, data center hosted. You need this piece in every data center or you have a cloud hosted solution also. Yeah, we, uh, we have a cloud hosted solution. In fact, that's going to be the demo that we're going to be doing for you. So pillar one is a data center uh, use case uh, where uh, normally people want to do everything in the data center. And then pillar two and three, which is about distributed infrastructure, global infrastructure, that's where the cloud comes into the picture. Those are great questions, by the way. I appreciate you asking them. Thank you. So uh, this is that final slide on this pillar where uh, what I wanted to convey and to the question that you were asking, uh, you know, what is it that makes uh, customers want uh, a ZPE solution versus assembling their own or going and buying uh, different uh, other commercial solutions. And so there is a need for a server-like uh, 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 behavior. So they need a server, but you need to have all the monitoring capability and all the interface uh, um, interfaces. Uh, the management of the entire thing needs to be uh, in place and, and all of the software needs to be there because they're not in the business of building this device, they're in the business of operating the network. And, uh, and so we've already built the device that they would have need to piece together. So it's about that enabling the end-to-end -end operation uh, to achieve the, um, the uh, network as code or net DevOps and remove human errors and, and increasing that up, uptime. And this is actually also a key point is that because we are now allowing a device to uh, manage an infrastructure, you, security is obviously becoming even more important. I mean, you can put like the best firewall on on this uh, on this in, uh, infrastructure, but if somebody can come and um, reboot uh, the the substrate and install a different uh, BIOS and a different OS, then that entire um, security is out the door, right? So when you know when infrastructure is instrumented, security is even more important so that it doesn't create that, uh, that weak link. And that's really what, the, uh, what I wanted to leave uh, with you um, as, the, as the audience here, that um, in, in terms of a solution, it's not about uh, the capabilities, but it's how the capabilities work together in a seamless fashion, in a zero touch, uh, out of box fashion, quick time to value, and all of this done with the utmost security from the very bottom of the hardware um, uh, uh, platform uh, all the way to the top.